This webinar is titled A Country Built to Last, Founders Reflections on the Creator. Well, in this series, we're taking a look at a country built to last, which includes knowing the core, preserving the core, and stimulating progress. And the founders implanted the core in the Declaration of Independence, and that core is the Creator. And here are some founders reflections on the Creator himself. Thomas Jefferson. So irresistible are these evidences of an intelligent and powerful agent that of the infinite numbers of men who have existed through all time, they have believed in the proportion of a million to one in the hypothesis of an eternal pre-existence of a creator rather than in that of a self-existent universe. The movements of the heavenly bodies so exactly held in their course by the balance of centrifugal and centripetal forces the structure of our earth itself with its distribution of lands, waters, and atmosphere, animal and vegetable bodies examined in all their minutest particles, insects, mere atoms of life, yet as perfectly organized as man or mammoth. The mineral substances, their generation and uses, it is impossible, I say, for the human mind not to believe that there is in all this design, cause, and effect up to an ultimate cause, a fabricator of all things from matter and motion, their preserver and regulator while permitted to exist in their present forms, and their regenerator into new and other forms. Well, thankfully in this series we've already taken a look at synonyms for the Creator because Thomas Jefferson is quite adept at using a variety of synonyms to describe the Creator of the universe. What about Benjamin Franklin? It might be judged an affront to your understanding should I go about to prove this first principle, the existence of a deity, and that he is the creator of the universe. For that would suppose you ignorant of what all mankind and all ages have agreed in. I shall therefore proceed to observe that he must be a being of infinite wisdom as appears in his admirable order and disposition of things. Whether we consider the heavenly bodies, the stars and planets and their wonderful regular motions, or the earth, compounded of such an excellent mixture of all the elements, or the admirable structure of animate bodies of such infinite variety, and yet every one adapted to its nature and the way of life it is to be placed in, whether on earth, in the air, or in the water, and so exactly that the highest and most exquisite human reason cannot find fault. Franklin is now saying, and Jefferson's already said, that the Creator can be seen in the design of the world and the universe if you just take time to take a look and consider it for yourself. John Adams. The stupendous plan of operation was projected by him who rules the universe, and a part assigned to every particle of matter to act in this great and complicated drama. The Creator looked into the remotest futurity and saw his great designs accomplished by this inextricable, this mysterious complication of causes. John Adams saying that the design is so complicated and complex and beautiful that there's no other choice but to acknowledge and to realize that there is a Creator. John Quincy Adams It is so obvious to every reasonable being that he did not make himself and the world in which he inhabits could as little made itself that the moment we begin to exercise the power of reflection it seems impossible to escape the conviction that there is a creator. John Quincy Adams is basically saying is that the only way that you could not know there is a creator is if you as an individual never take a moment to pause and reflect. That's how obvious the existence of the creator is. Finally, Noah Webster said this, The belief in an uncreated, self-existent, intelligent first cause takes possession of our minds whether we will or not. Because if man could not create himself, nothing else could. And matter, if it were not external, could produce nothing but matter. It could never produce thought, nor free will, nor consciousness. There must have been, therefore, a time when this globe and its inhabitants did not exist. The question then arises, what gave it existence? We answer, God, the great first cause of all things. The Founding Fathers could see the Creator in the design of the universe and the things that populate the universe and the world around them. They embedded this concept in the Declaration of Independence, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator. So the question we're posing in this series over and over again 
Are we as a nation for the Creator or at war with the Creator? And are you as an individual for the Creator or at war with the Creator? The founders investigated this for themselves. The question is, how about you? My name's Craig Seibert. Thanks for listening.